Alright, this is the second in a video series of the 45 Auto versus 357 Magnum in full-size handguns. And what I want to test today is momentum. This is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to hit this wood and see how far it moves it and then simply measure it. And the loads I'm going to use today, these are basically both what law enforcement would have used in their respective time frame. When the revolver and the 357 Magnum with a 4-inch barrel was big, this would be something that would be used. Um, this is the Federal 357 b but Remington and Winchester also had their own variants of this. Semi-jacketed 125 green hollow point. And this right here is the Federal Hydroshock 230 grain standard pressure. When the Glock 21 pretty much came out um, and it went to law enforcement, this was a pretty popular load for law enforcement. It was the 45 ACP 230 green. Hydroshock, hydroshock uh, jacket of hollow point. Now I chronographed these off camera. This 125 grain out of this gun was moving at 1,475 feet per second. This 230 grain out of this 5.3 inch barrel was moving at 880 feet per second. So we're talking um, 604 foot pounds energy versus 396 so you're talking about one-third more energy with that 357 magnum but how will that actually translate into momentum and how much it's going to move this piece of wood here i'm guessing this piece of wood weighs probably six or seven pounds so we'll see what kind of movement we get and we'll measure it and we'll see which which cartridge has more momentum in full-size handguns so here we go all right, first off is that 357 Magnum. I'm going to hit the wood kind of in the lower portion so we don't knock it over. Just see what kind of push we get. So here is that 125 grain 357B. See how much momentum it has. All right. It knocked it pretty hard. And let's just go from the closest to the front of this table here. Seven inches exactly. So it moved the front of this seven inches. And that's pretty good. That's about you know a seven pound block, seven inches. Let's flip it over. Hit it in the same area with the 45 automatic. Let's see what that does. Alright, here's the 230 grain hydroshock. We'll see what kind of momentum this has. And that knocked it over. If I were just to measure this right here, we're talking nine and a half inches almost. However, this kind of veered out to the side here. So how about I hit it one more time? And we'll see if we can get it to stay in there. So we don't lose that bullet. Let's see what it does then. So here we go. 45 auto. Right, same thing, it's knocking it over. Uh, this time it caught it, this time it's almost 10 and 3 quarters inches. So, how about we flip this over one more time? And we'll compare those numbers again by hitting it one more time with the 357 mag and see if we get the same results. So, at this point, we're almost 4 inches further with the 45, so 357 again. That time I blew it apart. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure where's the, the entrance and where's the exit here. Uh, we do have a 45 slug right here. So the 45, it did go through one board, just the base. Right through like that. That's funny. All right, let's do board to board. One of each. And we'll see what we get. 357, and we'll hit the 45 and see what happens. So I do about mid, mid pull here. I went right through it. 
Let's do the 45, same spot, about midway down. And that last result was kind of interesting. Because on the last one, when we're talking this, you're talking about the same. That's pretty neat. Um, this is where I just hit it. And it does look like it went right through. Interesting thing is the 357 Magnum did the same thing. And when we compare the exit holes here, this is the Hydroshox exit hole. This is the 357 Magnum. Significantly more damage to the back. Definitely a bigger hole with the 45 in the front. But that to that, no comparison. That 357 Magnum is definitely hitting with more power. And although some of the uh, first shots I did did kind of indicate that the 45 had more momentum because it was pushing it close to 11 inches versus the 357 was pushing it about 7 inches. Um, when you do something like this where you get a pass through, it's eh, pretty much the same. So is that momentum really going to affect the target you hit? What will it do to it? be honest, I don't know. However... 45, it's a good cartridge, no doubt. But when you look at that 357 Magnum, that's hard wood. Um, it would do probably worse to a human body. So, there's nothing wrong with the 45, however, I just think that the 357 Magnum, based on this test, going to have a little bit more knockdown force, more damage to the intended target. But get enough weight there, there is a little bit more momentum when I had them stacked up. So that's what I'm getting. So as always, thanks for watching.